Hey guys, I was just out getting some groceries and I came across this field here and I wanted to make a video. So behind me, you've got uh, a bunch of fields. You can kind of get a sense that there's still a lot of snow left. And um, if you look just past my head there, I don't know if you can hear it on the microphone, but the water is just raging. It's about 10 degrees outside and this is the main reason why swales make sense in cold climates. There's a lot of videos out there about why swales suck uh, in our northern climate and why they don't work and why you should use key line or this or that. Look, every water harvesting element out there has its own set of strengths and weaknesses. Right now, if I try to stick my finger in the ground here, um, it gets really cold here and, and so the ground still has frost six or seven feet down. We had minus 40 at uh, the middle of the winter here for two weeks and so we have really deep frost. And so when we're losing 30% of our moisture, um, which is in the form of snow, over the course of one to two weeks, that water is never coming back. Um, this is the time to be putting water in ponds. This is the time to be thawing the ground using swales. Um, swales have been shown on my friend's farm, Dakota Cohen's farm, to thaw the ground rapidly in the same way that steak will thaw quickly if you put it into water um, if you're trying to get it uh, defrosted quicker. And so this is the sound of opportunity being lost. Uh, and in a climate like ours where we only have about 10 to 12 inches of rain per year, um, this literally represents the lifeblood of the land. Now, in the past, if you wonder like, well, swales aren't natural, why would we do that? Yeah, but you see this drainage right here? This drainage, which has got all those black poplars growing in it, would have had beavers in them. These beavers would have represented the ponds, and beavers, when they go and they create ponds, they actually create um, uh, canals, essentially, like they'll dig in the earth because they actually want to use the water and the flotation or the buoyancy of the logs to their benefit. And so they create these um, canals, I keep forgetting the word, uh, which run adjacent or um, uh, perpendicular to their ponds, which are basically swales. And so you get these water catchments, their dams, and these canals, which then send water out back into the field and back flood it, which infiltrates water and creates these drought-proof environments. Now, what's really cool about being in a climate that we get snow is that anywhere you've got fences or shrubs, like you can see right here, there's shrubs, right? Let's see if I can point to it for you, right there. Um, those shrubs act as uh, wind breaks, so to speak. And so snow will accumulate there, which means that we live in one of the only climates where we can realistically affect the amount of rainfall that falls on a field. So if we want to increase the rainfall, we can put snow fences, which will then capture snow as it's blowing in the wintertime, with the long-term goal of placing trees or shelter belts there, because the trees will then end up acting as the snow fence and harvesting more snow, which then fills up the swales, which then fills up the ponds, which then helps to build the soil carbon. Soil carbon then infiltrates more water because carbon stores water. It's like 1% increase in soil carbon will increase the water holding capacity of a, of a hectare of land by 144,000 liters. So, um, this makes me really sad, but it also makes me really hopeful. If I can get it in the, the frame there. Where is it? There we go. Um, there is so much opportunity in all of these ditches where the water is just flowing away. And in some cases, carrying a whole bunch of soil with it. So anyways, guys, I hope you found that useful. If you did, give me a like, and we'll see you in the next video. Talk soon.